Now, as you know, over the past few weeks, smoke haze from bushfires around Sydney has created a lot of problems with air quality in Sydney, especially on a couple of days. It is lingering around, of course, with uh, bushfires continuing. And in response to that, 22 organisations have labelled the problem a public health emergency. One of those organisations is the Royal Australasian College of Physicians. And from them, I'm joined now by Dr Kate uh, Charlesworth. Thanks for joining us, Kate. So I appreciate your time. Just how damaging has this uh, smoke haze been this year? Obviously, there's bushfire smoke around Australian towns and cities uh, most summers, but uh, it's been particularly bad in Sydney this year. Yeah, I mean, Chris, this is really unprecedented. We've never seen anything like this before. This is not normal. We've had hazardous, hazardous air quality on a number of days over several weeks now. So, yeah, it's, it's very concerning for health organisations, and that's why a number of health organisations, including the Royal Australasian College of Physicians and others, 22 altogether, have taken this statement of declaring a public health emergency. So what needs to happen then if there's bad uh, uh, bushfire smoke? And it, and it is... Uh... It's not unprecedented. It has happened uh, many times before. It's unusual, of course. It's been particularly bad this summer, but it's happened, you know, up to 100 years ago. But what, what can you do it about it? It's unprecedented, Chris, and that we've not seen these sort of... I mean, look at what the experts are saying. We haven't seen this number of days over this many weeks, you know, since records began. Um, what we need to do about it... I mean, the health messaging is really important, you know, so stay indoors, don't exercise outdoors. For people with pre-existing heart and lung disease, you need to stick to your medication plan and, and have your medications to hand. But, Chris, it would be really irresponsible of me as a doctor not to talk about one of the key contributing causes of this um, air quality that we're seeing at the moment, and that is climate change. Scientists have been very clear, they've been saying for 10 or 20 years now, that climate change is leading to more frequent and more severe bushfires and droughts and heat waves. We are seeing the health impacts on our patients and on our communities. And so just as health professionals spoke up on asbestos and spoke up on tobacco, so we have a responsibility to speak up on climate change. Well, I'll come to the climate change issue in just a moment because a lot of what you just said is just not borne out by the facts and by the experts. But when it comes to the air pollution warnings, uh, I mean, they've been hard to miss in Sydney over the past few weeks, right? They've been on the radio, on television. Schools have been keeping children indoors. Uh, sporting events have been cancelled. So all of that response to the days of heavy smoke uh, haze seems to be in place. Uh, are you suggesting that no more needs to be done in that uh, respect? Well, in Sydney, I mean, we've seen that's the health messaging, that's right. And we, but we've, we still see people outside exercising in the smoke. We still see, you know, some kids playing outside when their levels are hazardous. So, I mean, I think the health messaging has been right. Whether that's been getting out to everyone, you know, everyone, you know, remains to be seen, I guess. Um, but on those, I mean, I would just say, Chris, on those, you know, the facts that I mentioned, I'm a doctor. I stick with science and facts and evidence. And those are the scientific facts. Leading health and medical organisations around the world in the last few months have declared climate change to be a health emergency. World Health Organisation in this country, my own college, the College of Physicians, the College of Emergency Medicine, the Australian Medical Association. So this is the considered opinion of leading medical organisations around the world and nursing groups as well, I should mention, of course. Um, so that, you know, that, and that's what we're seeing. That's why we're really concerned. Yeah, we're fully aware of, of that, that climate emergency posturing uh, around the world. When it comes to climate science, though, we should listen to climate scientists and the most preeminent climate climate scientists in this country say that the current drought can't be directly linked to climate change and obviously it's the drought that's that have made uh, uh, some of our bushfires uh, worse this year obviously most of them are deliberately lit but uh, but uh, the, bu the bushfires have been more difficult to counter because of the uh, the early season the the, the drought uh, and and and, yeah. the, and the scientists say you can't link this drought to directly to climate change so the science just doesn't bear that out the, the problem well, no, here the is the overwhelming the overwhelming majority of climate scientists in australia and around the world say that climate change is making more extreme weather that includes droughts and fires and bushfires more frequent and more severe extending no, the fire well, season that's a and, and reducing the, the capacity for hazard burning and other things so i mean i'm sorry chris no. i'm a doctor we stick with the facts and they're the facts <laughs> that's a misrepresentation of the facts the the, the climate no, science the climate science actually predicts a lot of these things will happen if we see uh, extended warming. In fact, when it comes to uh, dryness, of course, anybody who studies the basics of climate science knows that the more warming there is, 
the more moisture will be in the atmosphere. So some areas will actually get a lot more rain, others will face I'm more droughts. That's, com that's completely not true. And I'm, I'm, I'm it's a, not true. You know, we take an evidence based approach. It's not true. And that's you know, that's not the true. evidence that scientists have been saying for a number of years it, now. It's so not that, true that a warming planet. The position of leading health and medical organisations in this country and elsewhere. You're saying it's not true that a warming planet leads to more water in the atmosphere? Sorry, I missed that. I'm, you're saying what? You are actually saying that a warming planet doesn't lead to more water in the atmosphere and more precipitation? I mean, that's I'm climate about science the basics, impacts. isn't it? I'm talking about the health impacts. I'm a medical doctor and have a PhD in climate change and health, so I can talk about climate related health impacts. Yeah, well, I'm well, good not then. A good, scientist. good. You're, you're, you're a climate expert then. Just let's go back then. Do you not no, accept. I'm not a scientist, you... I'm a doctor. But... I'm talking about patients and communities and the impact on health. But and you... that's the reason why 22 but, but you just said that climate science will have climate... taken the step of saying this is a public health emergency. This is a cli hey. climate change is a health emergency. You said, yes, yes, that's, yes. You've that's said, the, you've that's said the that. Position. You, can't, you can't dispute those sort of facts. These are leading health and medical organisations. Um, nursing organisations as well who are saying that. You've said that a number of times, but you also said that a warming planet will lead to a drier situation, whereas I'm saying all the I've climate reports climate tell us that a warming planet will lead to more precipitation. More extreme weather, that more extreme weather will be more frequent and severe. That includes droughts and floods, heat wave storms um, and bushfires. And I mean, the, the, it's not just health and medical organisations, it's the fire. Firefighters, number of staff. Well, no, no. Let's stick no, to the science. Now, stick to the science. The, the, the point is uh, that we've always had problems with the uh, bushfire haze in this country. How are you suggesting governments can stop it or alleviate Sorry, it? I missed that. How we've always had smoke as from bushfires, measure, and we always will in this country. As a health measure, as a doctor, we need to address not only the health messaging which I've talked about, but also the key contributing cause to a lot of this. Um, bushfire smoke and that is climate change. So as a health protection measure it is very clear that we need to rapidly shift away from harmful fossil fuels right. and towards so, cleaner so and healthier and safer forms of energy. So, so what we need are you to rapidly decarbonise. So, so what are you suggesting that an Australian government can do that will il eliminate bushfires and bushfire smoke in Australia? No, nothing can eliminate them. We can reduce the risk of these happening again if we take serious action. Unfortunately we've left it so late that there is going to be some degree of climate change. It's already happening as we've seen. Um, there is some degree of climate change so we're going to have to adapt as well but we need to mitigate if we want to reduce, um, reduce the risk of these sorts of events happening you know, more regularly every summer. But we've always had bushfires. We've had bushfires worse than this in the past. We'll have bushfires worse than this in the future. And that's uh, sadly, why I've been very clear so, to say so, 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 so what, we, what can we do that we haven't done previously? Supercharging supercharging the extreme weather events which are having terrible impacts on people's health. What can we do that we aren't already doing, that we haven't done already to combat bushfires and smoke? To combat bushfires and smoke? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a firefighter. You could talk to the fire service about what, ne what is required in those areas. I'm in Sydney and I'm a doctor, so I'm not, you know, perhaps you know, qualified to speak on those things. So I'd be listening to the fire chiefs as to what, they, what, is, what is required in those areas. All right. Thanks for joining us, Kate. I appreciate your time. Thank you.